All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Would you believe it? We are already 10 days into the month of October. So time is certainly of the essence for a lot of you who have every intention of taking part of coin roll hunting uh, because it's boomed up here uh, just this year. Uh, a lot of it has to do with these uh, maniacal American women quarter errors that took the entire roll hunting scene by storm and everybody wants a part of it. Uh, the coins, you know, some of them are worth as low as five bucks, but that's okay. That's what 20 times face value, but there are a few that are worth hundreds of dollars and everybody, everybody wants, wants a piece of that pie and who could blame them? Um, when, when that kind of opportunity arises within the hobby, you kind of have to treat it like a black swan event. How often does something like this come up? We have to ask ourselves that very question. And rarely does it ever happen, you know, uh, probably once every 10 years, you know, we have a period of time where something truly crazy comes to the marketplace or comes into circulation that that we all want to be a part of. And, and some of it was relevant enough to gain national press, all right? And then when it kind of, I suppose, earns that respect of, of media outlets, then, you know, it's kind of a big deal. So I wanted to address a few folks that have still to this day, I mean, you know, the, the, the narrative never changes. Folks are commenting on a few of my, my videos. And of course, I, I'm totally driven to discuss with you, especially a lot of the newer collectors, the, the chance of finding your own treasures without having to pay the big money. And, um, you know, if you could avoid going out there, paying $500 for a coin, and instead taking that $500 and buying one of these... It's actually, in a, well, there's something in here. I, I don't know what it is, but you guys know this is a bank box. Just imagine that it's full of quarter rolls. We should probably kind of change our efforts and look through these, right? To find silver, which has always been popular. It's been popular since since the, the dawn of, you know, copper nickel clad coinage in circulation. But, ugh. but taking that $500 and, and doing something like this, where you're just simply going to the bank, man, I used to remember like 10 years ago, we could easily walk into a bank and come out with two, three, four boxes. No questions asked. Now there's a few of you out there. Um, some of the bigger YouTubers in coin roll hunting, like uh, Rob finds treasure. They have absolutely no issue obtaining bank boxes and they, they do it with, with uh, some pretty, pretty insane success, and the results show. Um, half dollar rolls, as you guys know, are drying up. Uh, and then during this pandemic period, there was a lot of talk of the dreaded coin shortage. Whether you want to believe that that even exists or not, this is something that a lot of banks are treating like a real event. You know, uh, a few of the banks I go to have week in, week out, religiously said, I cannot get you any rolls. I can't get you boxes like this. Um, even giving out some of these rolls is a little bit tough, but if you need it, we could certainly supply it to you. And this kind of opens up the door to a new way of approaching banks, bank tellers, branch managers of obtaining rolls. Okay. At this point, we're beyond the looking glass. I, I hate to sound cliche and using a lot of the like progressive type of sayings out there, but we really are. Gone are the days where you could just casually walk through the door of any bank. And this is even going for some of the big, bigger dogs out there. Your Chase Banks of the world, your Bank of America, Wells Fargo, yada yada, all of these big banks, Fifth Third Bank, um, and a few others. We have to approach it differently. 
And, you know, you're still, there's still a few things that are going to be the same. Okay, you have to go to a bank. All right. But while you're out, you might as well go to 10 banks. You, you know, if you're stopping at your local Walmart, go to a customer service desk and say, hey, can I grab a couple rolls of quarters? But you're doing that. And oftentimes they'd be more than happy to do that. So when we go to the banks, let's go ahead and try something else a little bit different. Let's not let's not go all in on trying to obtain you know, a a thousand dollar bank box of half dollars or a full box of pennies even, uh, because a lot of these places will just not give that to you. And things are different now. YouTube and its creator base for numismatics have been promoting the by golliness of coin roll hunting all across the land for over 10 years plus, and it's not going to stop. And because of that, coin deal or uh, coin, well, not coin dealers, coin dealers obviously know about it, but bank tellers, branch managers, they are certainly aware of this practice. And there are some bank tellers, managers, they, they are kind of, you know, playing that card of being, you know, the person that you really don't want to be associated with when they tell you, nope, I'm never giving you any bank boxes because I know what you're going to do with it. And especially for those people that kind of, I'm not going to say ruin it for the rest, but there are folks out there that I don't know why they don't heed the advice of not only myself, but a lot of the my contemporaries out in YouTube land who deal and do coin roll hunting. They don't take the advice don't crap where you eat. Why is it okay for you to, you know, go through all the work of trying to obtain this precious little roll that could have all the potential in the world, and then you end up dropping the same stuff off at the bank? You know, why? Why do that? Because they worked hard to order this stuff, whether they want to or not, some of you probably pay a little fee to obtain some of these uh, boxes. And at that point, you're probably telling yourself, well, it's not worth it anymore because I got to pay $20 or $5 or whatever the fee is at your local institution to grab these. And then at the end of the day, you're done searching through all of it. You package it back up and you give it back to the same bank that ordered it for you. That's what I mean. Don't dump where you eat. That's why we establish dump banks. Those banks are simply there for us to return the coins to, but they are never the same bank where we obtain. Because I guarantee you, just like that, a branch manager is going to go out of their mind. They're going to say, gosh darn it, wasn't that the same customer that we ordered these same uh, rolls for, these same coins? been over backwards, absorb the fee for themselves to order these things. It just doesn't make any sense. So obviously, the first thing that you got to realize is you have to play a little bit of the common sense bit on this one in order to make it work. And I'm speaking to every single one of you that's watching this video right now. Because if you don't do this, there's going to become a time and that time is coming up very fast where the total banking system, they're all going to communicate, you know, and say, we will not be selling bank boxes to customers anymore because of X, Y, Z practice. They already know it's a thing. A lot of the bank tellers I know, they actually watch the YouTube shows. They're aware of the Rob Finds treasures in the world, all right? There's a few dedicated tellers that know about that guy. They know about the half dollar make you holler. They know about all these guys, all right? This is not an indictment on them. This is an indictment on the people that think they could do it the same way as they can, but they forget the course of different um, etiquette standards that they need to know. So that's the first thing that I wanted to, you know, kind of 
throw out there and let you guys aware that this is still something that the banks are still mightily struggling with. Okay, I heard it on like three different occasions from a few different banks in the last 14 days. I'm like, it's like a facepalm moment for, for, you know, what I've heard. And, um, it's, it's going to affect everybody. It's, you know, it's, it's somehow, some way it's going to be a new rule, a new policy or something that's going to greatly decrease the amount of these roles that you could get. Okay. So with that being said, Let's go ahead and jump over to the next thing that I wanted to address, and that is the scarcity of said roles or bank boxes. You know, I touched upon it, you know, seven minutes ago. Let's be a little bit more smart in how we try and obtain these. Don't go all in to try and obtain those boxes, like I had said. Instead, if you know your branch manager or your bank tellers are having real true issues of ordering these things, or they're just a little gun shy about actually giving you the roles because they don't want to give up everything, even though you politely ask and you're a customer of theirs for 20, 20 years or plus, you know, I mean, throw, throw, throw out seniority out the window when it comes to stuff like this, because, you know, obviously a bank has to run, they have merchants that they need to cater to above and beyond personal banking business. Instead, go to the banks, ask for a little kind of like sampler of various roles. You could come up with any story you want to. My favorite is it's for a project for my kids. And they're cool with that. Or, you know, my daughter, which she's going through right now, you know, she, she's getting old enough where, you know, God bless her heart, she's doing fractions and all sorts of weird things, exponents, you know, but last year we were doing counting skills. So, you know, money counting, that is, differentiating between a penny, five cents, 10 cents, 25 cents, kind of like putting together change, adding it up, and so on and so forth. Grab some rolls, let your teller know, yeah, where she's learning about counting money in school. So we'd love to have, you know, uh, two or three rolls of each denomination. All right. And that's cool. You know, you're going to end up leaving the bank with like 12 to 15 rolls and that's perfectly fine. And then you go to the next bank. That's like right up the street. I don't want to hear a mumbo jumbo about how you have to be, uh, um, you know, a banking customer, you know, and actually have an account. Okay. Because I've used this with other banks that I don't have an account with. You simply walk in the door with a $10 bill and say, Hey, can I grab, you know, a few rolls of pennies, a few rolls of nickels, and a roll of dimes or whatever? Yeah, that comes up. Yeah, it's like 10 bucks. You know, but at least you're getting something. But if you went to, if you went to like four to five banks, keeping in mind that all this you could have done in less than an hour, okay, you can head back to home base and you're going to look at the spread of coins all over your desk or on your kitchen table say, wow, that's a pretty good haul. I ended up with 12 rolls of pennies. I ended up with 12 rolls of nickels. I ended up with only eight rolls of dimes. But look at this. I got like 20 rolls of quarters. You would be surprised the amount of content that you could get away with pilfering. Not pilfering because you're using your own money. We're not stealing here. Although if you did find something big, it's almost feel like a win. You know, like you're, you're really stealing something. But that, my friends, is the new way of trying to obtain this. Don't go all in. Because the jig is up, right? They're already aware that people are going in looking for those bank boxes. And they don't want to give them up. And that's kind of like the big issue that a lot of newer role hunters are encountering. And I'm trying to find a more discreet, is that the word? Discreet way of trying to obtain these where it's not making it as if you want to grab all of and everything that you want that they have. That's not what we're trying to do here. 
So I got. I want you guys to try this. For those of you that have been truly struggling with obtaining some of these roles, I want you to dial it down a little bit. Be nice. That's important. If you're not nice, they're not they're not obligated to give you anything, especially if you don't have an account there. Be nice. Take advantage of what they can do. That's within means. All right. Just because there's a coin shortage doesn't mean that they can't give you a few rolls. All right. There's not a bank in the world that I've been to where they they absolutely 100% refuse. To give out a roll. All right. If you went to a bank and say, hey, can I have a roll of pennies? They will give it to you. Where's my two quarters or my Kennedy half dollar? Hopefully it's 40% silver. Uh, by the way, yeah, bank tellers know that there's silver out there still. So they're looking for that too. So go ahead and try that out. Um, quick little secret. The banks really don't want you to know. But I'm sure a few of them will know because I, I do have friends in the banking industry that, that watch my videos religiously and they're okay with what I have to say because I've talked to them about these me uh, methods and it's all good. You're getting what you need and they're holding on to what they need and it's safe. It's the safest thing in the world. So enjoy it. Take advantage of it. Be on the lookout. There's going to be people that are going to be rolling up their coins and then sending it to the bank. Because guess what? That $50 toy that they need to buy for little Johnny from last Christmas is now $75. And that money has to come from somewhere, right? If you're not working that second or third job, people are cracking open those piggy banks, rolling them up. You know, they're making it kind of like a, you know, a family party at the dining room table. Hey, let's all roll coins and send them back to the bank. There's going to be a newly kind of like resurgence in, in fresh material that we probably haven't seen in like five years. And that's good news for each and every single one of you that want to dive in to coin roll hunting, to look for errors, to look for varieties is that we're going to see a refreshing of inventory, but at the same time, we have this massive resurgence of new roll hunters and numismatics people and coin collectors and currency collectors. Oh, by the way, grab yourself some dollar bills, okay? They, they, they will give them up any time of the day. You can pick up literally hundreds of dollars in dollar bills, and they won't bat an eye because usually not everybody asks for them. They just want the coins. So... Change up, change up your approach. Do things a little bit differently than what the other person's doing. And you're going to see all sorts of success and windfalls come your way as a result. Have fun with the hobby. Because when you have fun, things like making money or finding awesome errors and varieties that you could add to your collection where normally you have to spend like a lot of money to own these things is all part of the side effects of the game. The game of coin collecting and everything that it has to do with it. And that's why people love roll hunting is because it's a virtually low budget way of getting into the hobby and you're playing with house money. Because all you have to do is go through the coins and then send it on back, you know. Some of you probably like to do the coin star thing. You guys know it charges you 10% on the total amount and some of you are okay with that you know but it gives you the opportunity to go through more coins and it eliminates trying to have to forcefully choose a dump bank some of you probably don't want to do that because maybe you have a different relationship with that that teller or that branch manager and it's like well you know they may they will need the coins because again the coin shortage thing that quote it's still going to be floating around during the holidays. I guarantee you that it is going to be abused to death. Even though the Mint is producing coins at a record rate right now. We have the new quarter coming out here in about two weeks. The Anime Wong. And then we're going to find out what's wrong with the Wong. What kind of errors are we going to find on that coin and everybody is waiting in the wings so you guys get ready it's going to be a lot of fun 
But that's why I want to talk about a little bit of a uh, kind of doubling down, so to speak, on what is going to be a truly monumental season for the hobby. Um, as, as much as all the other different collecting interests are, are going down the toilet right now, coin collecting seems to be holding really well. So why not take advantage of it? You guys take care. Have a wonderful day. Check out my other videos. Oops. <laughs> Check out my other videos. I shouldn't have eaten three apples. Um, yeah, there's like 2,200 videos if you haven't seen it already. I even have a few like early days black and whites. So those are entertaining as well. Peace. See you guys.